It's time to rethink, renew, and reimagine retirement. Welcome to Retire Repurposed. This podcast is dedicated to help people transition into fulfilling and purposeful retirements. Retirement is a big life change. In fact, the two most dangerous years of a person's life are the year they were born and the year they retire. We believe that retirement is not the end, rather the beginning of what could be the most impactful season of a person's life. So don't retire, become repurposed. Well, I'm your host, Jared Sebesta. On behalf of Ben Tejas and myself, we are so glad that you are joining us here today. Now, this podcast, Retire Repurposed, it is all about just that, retirement. But it's unlike almost every single podcast that you're going to see out there on the internet about retirement. This podcast is specifically not about money. Now, do a little due diligence at some point. Google podcasts about retirement. Google retirement in general. What you're going to find is a bunch of content related to the financial side. How do you plan for retirement? What investments should you be doing? What are things you need to be look out, on the lookout for? What, what strategies with regards to your money should you be taking? Now, those things are important. Don't get me wrong. You need to take the financial side to retirement very seriously, and we do that here on this podcast, but that's not exactly what this podcast is all about. It's about the non-financial parts of retirement and how they work with your retirement plan. I don't want to take away from the expertise and the knowledge and, and the importance of a retirement plan, but lots of times that's the easy part. Many times the easy part is figuring out the numbers. The truth is, is that if you have a lot of time to plan for retirement pending a major uh, you know, a catastrophic event or health event, Planning for retirement with enough time is actually fairly simple. It's just a math equation, and then you just have to execute it. The hardest part is the you part. (laughs) It's the human behavior part. It's the spiritual. It's the emotional time. It's the purpose side. If you don't have purpose in your retirement, you are going to be living in exile. There will be a disconnect between your life and the spiritual and the purpose side to your life. And so many times people think that they're going to retire. They're going to remove work from the life equation and everything is just going to fall into place. And that is just not what happens. What essentially happens is that the thing that gave you perhaps purpose and reason to move your body and guardrails and these ways to platform your skills, your talents and abilities, even if you didn't love your job or career, is now taken away and you're given back eight hours a day for a total of 30 to 40 hours a week. That's all it did. And so many people think they have this the, the, the story in their mind because of how society sells you on this idea of retirement that now all of a sudden your life is going to be awesome. You know what happens? It looks exactly the same. The truth is your life pre-retirement and post-retirement is going to look for the most part just the same. If you didn't like travel before retirement, you're not going to love it after you retire. You're going to be given back a block of time. And the thing that maybe gave you some purpose will be now taken away. And you are setting the stage for people to live in spiritual, emotional, and psychological exile. And so what we want to do with this show is we want to help you overcome those obstacles before they start. One thing that we talk about in our financial firm, we talk about stewarding your time, your talent, and your treasure. Treasure is an important piece. Yes, you should be taking into account the the financial side. But you want to have a killer life, you want to have a stellar life, you want to have an epic life, a fun life that's filled with with, with life experiences and fulfillment, steward your time, your talent, and your treasure well. That goes for pre-retirees as well. You should be doing that pre-retirement, but you better be doing it post-retirement, stewarding your time, your talent, and your treasure. What's interesting is that we've gotten in the habit of, of asking our clients, of the three, which one is most important? Is it your time, your talent, or your treasure? You would think that coming from a financial firm, a retirement planning firm, that we would say financial, or that you would say financial, or we would want you to say financial. And the truth is, almost every single time, we get time. Time is your greatest asset. Time, The way that you steward your time is going to be your ticket to creating life equity. You want, you know, we, Again, we talk about equity and investments all the time in the financial world. The reality is is that if you want to have a great life, a fulfilling life, a meaningful and impactful life, you need to be investing in life equity. And the way that you do that 
is you steward your time really well. So we've spent the last several shows talking about specifically your time. How much time do you actually have left? Again, a lot of people think I'm going to retire at 65. I'm going to have 20 years, 25 years. The truth is, is that you may do that, but how are you actually spending that? How are you actually spending that time? It's not 20 years. You've just been giving, given back eight hours per day. And studies show us over and over and over again that most people spend five to eight, five of the eight hours of that time given back leisuring around and watching television. Barely any of it was spent traveling and literally none of it was spent growing. And that's a problem. So what is your life actually going to look like and how much time do you actually have left? And more importantly, what are you going to do with that? We spend time talking about the bookends. How do you start each day? How you start each day will many times dictate how the day goes. That first hour is one of the most important hours of your day. In fact, you could probably rewind it even a little bit more. That first half hour, maybe even the first 15 minutes of your day will dictate or can dictate how your day goes. And then we spent an entire show, I think two shows ago, talking about how to end each day. How do you end each day? What should you be doing? What should you not be doing to end each show? I'll give you a little nugget from that. You shouldn't end the day watching political news. Don't watch political news until you can't stand it anymore, shut it off, and head to bed. You are doing yourself a disservice. Some of the things that we're going to talk about here today are going to, are going to come back to this idea of reflection and how you should end your day. But if you can win your day and end your day well, you, you're, you're having a stellar day. What do you do in between there? We covered that last week. Five non-negotiables for every retirement day. There's five things that every single day should be included. If you haven't listened to that show, go back and listen to that. One of them, though, was adding value. Every single day, you should be adding value into somebody else's life. You should be adding value. Your light should be shining. I mean, that could literally mean you send somebody a voicemail or you send them a text or you encourage your neighbor. When you do that, your light shines. And when your light shines, other people's lights shine. And when that happens, guess what happens to your light? Your light gets brighter. And on top of that, your capacity to experience life at a greater level, more fulfillment, more joy, and to have more light shine goes up. Everybody wins when you shine your light, and that should hap- that should be happening literally every day. That was one of five things. We talked about that last week. Again, if you missed the last several shows, go back and check them out. We've covered a whole plethora of topics, all coming back to this idea of how you're spending your time. So on today's show, I want to cover five mindsets that retirees need to adapt immediately. Five mindsets, a paradigm, paradigms that you should be thinking about, uh, mindsets uh, like lenses by which you go through your day. You could call them disciplines. These are five things, maybe not specifically like what we talked about last week, but five ways that you need to consider each and every day. And to do this, this is if you do these things, you're going to have a great day. You're going to have a great life and you're going to feel amazing. Before we get started with that, The best thing that you can do for your life is to invest in yourself. The better that you can become, the better the world is. A lot of people talk about winning. You know, there's a lot of personal development people out there and they're screaming and yelling at you and they just want you to win. You know, winning is the ultimate goal. Winning is just a byproduct. Did you know that? Winning winning isn't something that you try to do. Becoming the best possible version of yourself helping as much many people as you can, letting your light shine the brightest. As a byproduct, if you do that, you will win. If you become your greatest authentic version of yourself, meaning God created you specifically to become a certain person, if you are continually becoming the best version of yourself that God created you to be, your light will shine and you will be having a lot of fun doing it. And as a byproduct, you will be winning. Now, again, this is not the version of retirement that society is going to give you. They're going to give you a much different version. The version the world's going to give you is that you retired. Now it's time for you to do nothing. The more of nothing that you can do, the more that you're winning. That is literally the exact opposite equation to winning than what we give you on this show. The way that you win is you let your light shine more. How do you do that? You invest in yourself. You adapt disciplines. You adapt new mindsets on how you go throughout your life and go throughout your day. So that's what we're going to talk about here today. I've got five of them for you. Here's number one. Get in the habit 
of absorbing. Get in the habit of absorbing everything you can from every single day. You should be on the lookout for what can you get from the day. That should be your attitude when you wake up. God, what are you going to give me today that's going to make me better? What lessons can I learn today, good and bad? The goal is not to get through the day. So many times we wake up and it's like, holy cow, I just got to get through the day. It's going to be a rough day. I just got to get through it. And trust me, I understand. There are time, There's probably people listening to this that are going through difficult times. And right now you're just hanging on for dear life and you're just trying to get through the day. I understand it. Been there, done that. Generally speaking, though, the goal of life isn't to just get through the day. We have to have this idea of absorption. Change your attitude to say, what can I get from the day? How do you do that? Be present. Be present. Don't do anything that dulls your senses. Don't do anything that distracts you and makes you despondent and not in touch with reality. Be present. Take notice of the day. Take mental notes of the day. Take mental notes of the people that you talk to. Take mental notes of the messages, the conversations, the little nuggets Get engaged with the day. Again, I've used this story a number of times. I had a chance to speak to a group of retirees a couple of years ago uh, here in our local town, and there was probably 30 retirees lined up over uh, over a lunch hour, and I was going to give a talk, and before I started talking, I went through the crowd. I said, hey, what's your name? What you got planned today? So many of them said nothing. I said, really, nothing? I go, what are you going to do after this? Oh, nothing. I go, what do you got planned? For real, seriously, what are you going to do? Nothing. And they had a big, giant smile on their face. And I understand. I get it. I get it. I get it. Yes, yes, we could just have days where we can kind of lounge a little bit and rest. But when we have this idea that there really is nothing for me to get from the day, my job is just to kind of get through it doing as little as possible. We are missing it. You are not growing when that is your attitude. Learn from the day. Get engaged with the day. Don't miss it. Take mental pictures. Capture the lessons that this life wants to give you. You want to expound every possible lesson that you can get. You've got to have an attitude and a posture of absorption. What can you get from the day? That's called absorption. That's lesson number one. Here's mindset number two. Respond. After you absorbed, now it's time for you to respond. So many people want to go through life and they, they, they guard their heart from emotions and feelings. Perhaps that has to do with, with past hurts, traumas, mindsets, the way that they were raised. There might be some personality um, things that are tied in there. But let life touch you. Let life touch you. Give in to the emotions and the feelings of the day. There was a, I think it was, it was a, a famous talk was given a, a number of years ago. And the gentleman said, if I laugh and I cry and I learn today, that's a heck of a day. If I've been pushed all the way to belly laughter and yet pushed all the other way to tears and I learned something today, that is one heck of a day. Imagine what your life would look like in a year if you did that every single day. Forget a year. What would it look like at the end of this week? What would it look like at the end of the day if you laughed almost to tears cried almost to tears, and you learned something. What you're doing is is you're investing in your own life equity. But so many people put up this guard, and because of, again, past hurts, past unhealed traumas, whatever that is, they become numb to their emotions, and you're missing out when you do that. Respond because you're letting life touch you. Our emotions need to be engaged with the day. You're not to be controlled by your emotions. I don't think that that is biblical. The Bible talks about taking every thought captive. We don't bow to every emotion and act upon them, but we let our emotions touch us. That's part of the human experience. (laughs) We pity the people that never experience the highs and never experience the lows. Life is about that touch of life. Laugh, cry, learn. If you do each of those things every single day, you are having one heck of a day. So first, absorb, then respond. And then number three, reflect. Reflect. Go back and study the day. Go back and study the day. Take mental notes because you're absorbing. And then don't just absorb them once and then let them go. Reflect on them over and over again. If you listen to our show a couple of shows ago where we talked about how to end the day, this is part of it. 
Spend some time at the end of each day and reflect. Go over the things that that, that touched you. Go over the motions. Go over the conversations. Go back and look at your schedule for the day. Who did you meet with? What did you do? What did you talk about? What were the things that were said? Because when you go back over them over and over and over again, what it does is it locks it in. It locks it in. That horsepower that you can gain from those life experiences every single day, you get them when we go back and we reflect. Be a student of your day. Don't just go to the lecture and walk away and never think about it ever again. Go to the lecture, so to speak. Get the information and then go back home in your study and study it. Go over your notes. This will serve you in the future. All right, these experiences that you lock in and reflect upon will serve you into the future. It makes you better. It makes you grow. It makes your light shine brighter. It makes your capacity go up. Do this at the end of every single day. Do it at the end of each week. Spend a little more time at the end of your week on Sunday night before you go to bed and think about the week. As you plan for the week ahead, think about what happened. Again, go over your schedule. Who did you meet? Oh, yeah, I met with John. That's awesome. Oh, I had, I had coffee with her or him. And we talked about X, Y, and Z. When you do that, it locks it in. Do this at the end of each year. Go through your year. Reflect on the year. Again, your job isn't to just get through the year. Just get through your life. Get through the year. Think about those experiences and then lock them in because they will make you better, especially in the next year to come. Wisdom comes from living a different day each day over and over again. All right, we've talked about hiring, you know, people on this <laughs> on this show before. When we if you if you've had a company or own a company, what would you rather have? Somebody who has lived the same day a hundred times or the person who's lived a hundred different days? Who's gonna have more wisdom? It's the person who is continually learning and expanding, not just having the same day over and over again. We talk about one of the biggest tragedies of retirement is when every single day looks like Saturday. You're not meant to live that way, where life just blends into each day, day after day after day. No, have different days. Evaluate, reflect, take from the day. Find some time to get alone. Solitude is bad. Isolation is bad, but find some time to reflect alone with yourself and your thoughts and think, what did you learn? What did you study? How can you be better? And why do you do this? Because you gather up those those, those, those little lessons and they are invested in tomorrow. Each year should be more and more exciting. Hear me on this one. What if your life looked like the older you get, life got more exciting because you had a yet another year of wisdom and value to bring to the next year? What could you do for your family? What could you do for your marriage? What could you do for your neighborhood, your community, your group of friends, and even the world? If you looked at life that way where you said, I'm going to gather up all of the wisdom from the last year, I mean, I'm going to apply it to this next year. Birthdays should be very exciting. You didn't just exist another year. You are now taking the previous years, and now it's day one to apply it to your next year. What if you had that attitude? That falls under the discipline of reflection. Here's number four, act. Act. You've got wisdom. Now it's time to move. Don't wait. Take action. When's the best time to act? The best time to act is when the idea is fresh and the emotion is high. When you get a fresh idea and you're excited about it, act. Do it. You know what happens to emotions after if you let them sit for a while? Guess what? They diminish. Pretty soon they disappear. The best time to act is when the emotions are high and the idea is fresh. Wisdom is wasted when we don't take action. That's why it's so important to reflect. Okay, You, you, you got some new knowledge. You, you learned a lesson. You got a new idea. Now act upon it. When you get the prompt, take action action. This is what builds life equity. Everything in your life is important. Some things in your life are more important than others, but everything will affect everything. Don't lack in any area of your life, whether that's your physical life, whether that's your relational life, whether that's your spiritual life, whether that's your financial life. Don't lack in any of these areas because when you do and you don't take action, it hurts the others. Get small wins every single day. That's all you got to do. We've talked about that on the show. It's like the art of the small win. If you want to have a wonderful life, you don't have to have these monumentous wins every single day. You just got to go up, go out, and have small wins every day. Small wins doing what? Go listen to last week's show. We'll give you five things. If you win in these five areas, bam, you got it. Get small wins every day. And hear me on this one. Rest very little. 
the point of life should not be resting. Is resting important? Yes. We call it earn rest. You deserve it and you should have it. But the point of life isn't to rest. It's to act. Hear me again. The point of life is not to rest. It's to act. And when we act, we invest and reinvest these life experiences and wisdom back into our life and we experience this life equity. The last thing you need to be doing is sharing. Go through the day and look for opportunities and ways that you can share. Pass along these ideas. Pass along this wisdom. Pass along this knowledge. You should have a lot of it if you're doing all the things I talked about already here today. If you're absorbing, you're responding, you're reflecting, and you're acting, you will have a growing base of knowledge. By the way, I just heard a statistic not too long ago. It said that the half-life of knowledge is now down to about two years. What does that mean? Half of what you know today will be obsolete in two years, and then it will be halved again two years after that. How's that make you feel, right? So what do you need to be doing? You need to be learning, constantly learning, constantly growing, constantly getting new wisdom. And again, just think about the, the, the differences on, on, on what retirement should look like versus what the world tells you it should be like. Okay? John Maxwell says, if you're not growing, you're dying. Pat Riley, NBA coach, says, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. This applies to you and your life, especially in retirement. So get the knowledge and then pass it along. Guess who wins when you share? Guess who ultimately wins when you have a posture and an attitude to share? You do. You do. One of my favorite things to do is to get in front of people and share a message. And so many times I have shared that message literally dozens and dozens and dozens of times. For them, it's the first time they've heard it. For the audience members, it might be the first time. But for me, it might be the 30th or 40th or 100th time that I've told a story. Do you know who gets just as fired up than maybe perhaps someone in the audience hearing it? I do. I do. That's why I love speaking. That's why I love getting on a a podcast like this in front of a mic and sharing the things that I have learned. It's not look at me. Oh, look what I've done. It's to inspire you to look at what is possible for you. You win. The way that I win is by watching you win. How do you win? It's when your eyes start opening to the potential that you have. So why should you want to share? It's almost for selfish reasons, and I don't mean them physically selfish, but you know what I'm trying to say. It's for you. When you recommend a book, when you share a Bible verse, you never know who you're going to impact when you share. Sharing helps you. It also helps who you share with, but it also makes you bigger. It makes your your platform bigger. It makes your light shine brighter. And also, too, it makes your capacity go up. Your cup will get bigger. You shine light by pouring out the wisdom and the knowledge and the ideas and the love to other people. And when that gets poured out, God makes your cup bigger. And then he fills it back up along with all of these disciplines I've talked about, and then you pour it out again, and then more light gets poured out, and then your cup gets bigger. You wanna have a better life, you wanna be happier, you wanna be more fulfilled, get a bigger cup. How do you get a bigger cup? You share. There's no capacity limit on human beings. Don't let anybody make you think that you're tapped out. It does not exist. There's no limitations on the capacity of a human being. The only thing that that caps us is the way that we think. But as your capacity goes up, your ability to have a phenomenal life and great life experiences and deep connections with loved ones and the Lord goes up. So those are the five things I wanted to talk about today. Five mindsets, five disciplines. Absorb, respond, reflect, act, and share. If you thought this was great content today, subscribe to our podcast. Share it with people who need to hear it. Let our light shine to other people through you by you sharing this content. I'm Jared Sebesta. Thanks for listening today. We'll see you next time. Securities offered through Avantax Investment Services, member FINRA, SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through Avantax Advisory Services. 
insurance services offered through an Avantax-affiliated insurance agency.